Can I still be autistic without an official formal diagnosis? Hmm. Hello and welcome to the debut episode of Autism Files. Files with a PH. Get it? You know, like how I call myself an Anglophile? See, it's a play on words. It's... Okay. Sorry. I just see myself out. Hi, my name is Shay, and I have an unofficial diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. I'll get to that unofficial bit in a second. I started this channel after being inspired by autistic YouTubers like Hunter Hansen from The Life Autistic, Sam from Yo Sam D Sam, Dan from The Aspie World, Ella from Purple Ella, and many others. My hope is that this channel can become a place where autistic people and neurotypical friends, family, and caregivers can come together talk about autism, share information, and maybe even make friends. So with that out of the way, let's get to the topic of this video. Can I be autistic without an official formal diagnosis? And what do I mean when I say I have an unofficial diagnosis? Well, to understand, let's take a look at my autism journey so far. I was always a shy, lonely kid, often with just one friend. Hi, you're my only friend too, so hi, only friend. What's wrong with us? Hmm, nothing. We're just different. That's right, and different is okay. That's right. Let's go ride our bikes around the neighborhood. Okay. I would often get obsessed with things. When I was 12, I got really into maps. I would look at maps, trace maps, and draw my own maps. Eventually, I had an atlas of the world I'd take with me to school to look at during downtime. Here is one of the maps I drew when I was about 12. I don't believe this is a real city of any sort. I think it's fictional. Um, and as you can probably tell, I was a lot more interested in the highway system than in the, the surface streets within the city. At the time, I was really fascinated by the U.S. interstate highway system. In high school, I was super quiet. Though I sometimes enjoyed talking to the teachers, I rarely spoke to my classmates. Whilst other kids were going out and having dates, I was content to sit in my room and read my dad's psychology and economics textbooks. That was fun for me. Let's see. Definition of an emotion. A complex and conscious affective experience that involves diffuse physiological changes and can be expressed overtly in characteristic behavior patterns. Hmm. Cool. As an adult, I once had a job where I was working with both children and adults with autism. All that time, I never suspected a thing. My patients, they didn't seem anything like me. I mean, how could I be autistic? Then, one day, I was talking to my dad on the phone, telling him about what I did. I mentioned that many of my patients walked on their toes. To that, he replied, "Oh." You used to do that. Wait, what? In 2014, I finally got tested at an autism center here in Phoenix. It didn't cost me anything because it was part of a research project. Had I gotten the diagnosis, I would get to participate in the research. The results were inconclusive. They wouldn't give me the diagnosis, but they also wouldn't rule it out. They said I might still be on the spectrum, but at that moment, I was not displaying enough symptoms. 
Part of it could have been my excellent masking. After all, I've more or less passed for neurotypical all this time. I've also improved a lot with my social skills. I mean, after a while, you just sort of figure things out on your own. At a point, I learned that I didn't actually have to say everything that popped into my head. So with an inconclusive test result, there was nothing more to do. I just had to let it go, at least for a while. A few years later, I became involved in the Twitter writing community. Writers win up against a deadline. LOL. Okay. Send tweet. See, when I'm not at my job and not making YouTube videos, I'm a YA fantasy writer working on a story with an autistic protagonist. Anyway, I started meeting writers who had autism diagnoses. One in particular I became friends with. And through talking to them, I became more and more convinced I was on the spectrum. Then I read a book called The Complete Guide to Asperger's by Tony Atwood. That convinced me even more. I strongly identified with a lot of what he described. I kept highlighting passages in the book. Every time it came to a part where I was like, oh yes, this is so me, I would highlight it. I did a lot of highlighting in that book. With that in mind, I had to do something. So, I found a clinical psychologist near me and made an appointment to see him. Maybe I could try again with getting a diagnosis. I went into my first appointment with a printed 13-page Word document I called the case for ASD. It was part list, part essay, explaining why I thought I was autistic. The doctor spent most of our first session reading my list of symptoms. When he was finished, he agreed. Yes, what I had told him in those 13 pages was consistent with autism. He also added, and probably a bit of ADHD and OCD in there as well. That part surprised me a bit. So naturally, I was really happy. I felt vindicated. Finally, someone agrees with me, and a clinical psychologist, no less. Someone with many years of experience in the field. And I took that as a diagnosis. More recently, though, I found out that actually wasn't a diagnosis. Not an official one, anyway. After all, he hadn't given me the test, and the test is, well, kind of all important at least as far as a formal, official diagnosis goes. After I got what I took as a diagnosis, I started telling friends and family that I was on the spectrum. Some were skeptical, but others, much to my surprise, were like, duh, of course. One friend said, I knew from the moment I met you. Another one said, I could have given you that diagnosis 15 years ago. And a cousin said, that doesn't surprise me at all. So the answer to the question, can I be autistic without a formal diagnosis, for me at least, is yes. Yes, I can be autistic without a formal diagnosis. And so can you. If you feel like you tick all the boxes, if you've taken every online autism test you can think of, if everything you read about autism or learn about it here on YouTube reinforces that belief, then I, for one, am willing to accept you as autistic. No official diagnosis necessary. If indeed you feel like you might be autistic, but you're not sure yet, Sam from Yosemite Sam has an excellent video where she breaks down all the autism spectrum disorder criteria for you in plain English. I'll add a link to her video in the description. Well, that's it for this first episode of Autism Files. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, a comment. Would love to hear from you what you think of the video. And uh, finally, please feel free to share this with others. I'm an Autism File, and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching.
See you next time.